Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In the previous exercise, we demonstrated how to create custom alert dialog boxes using JavaScript and CSS. In this related exercise, we're going to demonstrate creating custom confirm dialog boxes in which you give the user more choices, which means more buttons. And a confirm box requires just a little bit more script logic because your program has to perform some action after the user confirms the action. Let's show you the finished product of what you'll be learning to create. So what I have here is a simulated dynamic posts on a page. And I have a delete button next to each post. So let's go to the first one and click delete. Confirm that action, delete post, and you can see our custom dialog box here for confirming. And this gives the user two buttons, yes or no. If they click no, nothing happens. But if they happen to click yes, that post is deleted from the page. We can also delete the next one dynamically. Delete post, yes. We're going to begin with the same exact code that we left off with at the end of the last exercise. So if you need to understand all the code that we're going to begin with, all you have to do is view the previous exercise. Now our goal, as it was in the previous exercise, is to make a reusable box that will render all of our program dialogs dynamically. So we're going to simply extend this existing code to make it work for both confirm dialogs and alert dialogs. We're also going to declutter this primary file by externalizing and compartmentalizing our CSS and JavaScript that powers our custom dialog boxes. So what we'll do is open the CSS first. We'll take all of the CSS code, control X. Then you go into your code editor, whatever IDE you're in, and you make a new CSS file. And then you can just pop your code in. Then you go to File, Save As, Dialog.CSS. So now I have Dialog.CSS sitting in the same folder as my primary file. So we can just remove this style element. And in its place, we're going to put a link element to our style sheet and then we put the path to our style sheet right here now that you have the CSS externalized let's test and make sure everything is still connected and working so I hit my custom alert and all the CSS is still attached everything is fine now let's do the same thing to the JavaScript because all of this JavaScript can be externalized and made more reusable that way if you have to use this in many different files so let's grab all of the JavaScript control X Let's go to File, New, JavaScript File. And we pop in all of our code, Control V to paste it. And then we save this file just like we did the CSS file. So now I have dialog.js. So all I have to do is go into my primary file now. And right there where my script element is, I just put script source and dialog.js. Now let's test and make sure that our JavaScript is still working and connected and everything is working just fine. Now that's a good way to declutter your primary files and you can also just call in dialog.css and dialog.js into many different primary files that you have within your program. Alright now let's create this custom confirm box to go along with our custom alert box. So we'll take all of the existing HTML within the file making sure that we keep our dialog overlay and dialog box in place. I'm going to put in the following HTML. And what I'm doing here is simulating posts that you would have dynamically rendered within your software. But it really could be any content. So I have two paragraph elements, and each paragraph element has a unique ID. This one has post1 ID, and this one has ID of post2. And here would be the post text. And then in the post somewhere, we have a delete button. And what we're going to do is run a custom method of confirm.render. This is going to make our dialog box pop up. And we're going to pass three arguments to that method. The dialog that we want the user to see in the window. The operation that we want to perform. And the ID of the element that we want to delete. So you can see both buttons are set up that way for both posts. So all we have to do is go into our dialog.js now. And instead of having just a custom alert object, we're going to place in a custom confirm object now. And our confirm object is going to have a similar structure to our alert object with some slight variation. So what I'll do is collapse all of the custom alert code and right under it I'm going to pop in the custom confirm code. And You can see it has a very similar structure to the custom alert. But instead of having an OK method we now have a no and yes method. 
because a confirm box you have to give the user a choice between yes or no or OK and cancel whatever you want to name your buttons so if they confirm you run this code here if they cancel or press no then you run this code here I gotta bring line 38 here is separated I gotta bring that up to be all on one line on line 36 so with the custom alert box all we did was we put one button here that was running the alert dot OK method but now we have to supply two buttons to the user a yes button and a no button so for the first button we're going to run the confirm dot yes method which you can see is sitting right here and we're gonna pass two arguments to that confirm yes method the operation and the post ID and we get those arguments by initially passing those three arguments through the render method right here confirm dot render we're passing three arguments we're scooping up those three arguments right here and we can pass those arguments as needed to any other methods within our object and you can also make these properties of the object but I just decided to pass them dynamically through the methods and if they click the no button all you have to do is run the confirm dot no method and that simply just removes the dialog window and the overlay but if they click yes that's when we want to actually perform the action that they were about to initiate such as deleting a post now what I did in the yes method was I put an evaluation to see which operation we want now if the operation happens to be delete post then we're going to run a function called delete post and pass the ID of the post that we want to delete into that function so let's go right above our custom confirm object and put in a new function called delete post and we're going to scoop up the ID of the post that we need to delete as an argument now this line the reason why I put that there is that's your database ID for that post and all you have to do is remove the post and the underscore for instance if you're rendering these dynamically what you would have coming out of your database is ID 1 ID 2 for whatever post so all you have to do is put on the front of that post and underscore and that can be the ID of each element that holds that post and when your JavaScript parses it to delete it you can remove all you have to do is replace the post and underscore and what you'll be left with is the one what you'll be left with is just the two that way you can run an Ajax request in this delete post method you run an Ajax request right here and what this line does is it removes that element from the page so actually let me show you how this runs by saving all these files and let's run this in our favorite browser what you can see is we have two posts and I'm gonna delete the first one and you can see my custom confirm box it says confirm that action delete post I say yes or no if I say no the post remains if I press it again and I say yes the post is deleted I can also delete the next one dynamically yes so the way I got the element to be removed from the page without page refresh is I just run document dot body remove child method and I put the object reference for the child that I want to remove right here now the reason why I put this line in place now this line isn't even needed to remove that child element this line I just put in as an extra to you because this is the database ID for whatever post this will represent a number such as just the one or just the two which would be the IDs because we're stripping the post and underscore substring from the post ID so you can use this variable in your Ajax request I'll just put a note I'll say run Ajax request here to delete post and database and that's what will remove the post from the database so you remove your post from your database using Ajax and when your PHP file gives a response back to the Ajax request you simply remove that element from the page now it's important to keep in mind that when you're issuing the render method for a confirm box you can put any variables that you want right here and then in your yes method you can check to see which operation that you're doing so this can be used for more than just deleting posts if there's other things on the page that you need confirm for you can run different operations and those would be handled within your this dot yes method so this dot yes can be set up to intake an operation variable and an ID and then you can just check to see if the operation is delete post 
you're going to run some specialized function that deletes posts, which we already placed up here. And that's pretty much all the logic. Now in the final video, we'll be adding a custom prompt object. Because in JavaScript, you have three types of dialog boxes. You have alert, confirm, and prompt. We already covered creating custom alert and confirm boxes. Now the last box is the prompt box. Now what the prompt box gives the user is a input field so they can give you some value. So you, if you ever have a situation within your program where you need to get a value from the user before something can occur, prompt box is perfect for that. So that will be our last video in demonstrating how to create custom dialog boxes.